Welcome to my channel, my name's Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Fridays and most Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about the Beetle, the Model T, and a little bit about the Land Cruiser. Okay, so the Beetle. Um, I've made some progress on the Beetle since my last update video. Uh, I've got the transmission out, and I'm in the process of replacing the seals. Um, I had ordered a kit, which I thought um, was the new seals for this area, um, but it wasn't. It was the wrong seal, uh, and I also didn't have the other seals for the transmission. So um, since then, once I pulled it out, I realized exactly what I needed. I was able to go down to my local Volkswagen shop and get everything I needed. So I've got a whole new gasket set for the transmission. Um, I also have these kits, which replace all the seals and the lock ring and the cover um, for this. So I've got all of that. I also have um, a new main seal and a new seal for the shifter rod. So I have everything I need now to finish up the transmission uh, or the transaxle and then get it back in the car. Um, the other good news is on the engine. Um, I mentioned in my last update video that I had ordered the cylinders um, and pistons, but I didn't know how long it was going to take to get those. I did get those. Um, I also um, have discussed the heads in the past. So this head uh, has a slight, slight uh, crack in between the valves. Uh, and actually, I'm pretty sure it was just fine. The crack doesn't go below the metal ring where the valve seat, so I don't think it was actually causing any problems, at least not yet. Uh, but regardless, I uh, bought a new um, head. This is an original head that had been rebuilt, um, but the place I got it from only had one, so I couldn't buy two of them to have you know both of them uh, new and both re rebuilt. So I took um, this head, which was the original head I pulled off, and had it rebuilt. Um, the place that rebuilt it told me what I, I pretty much already assumed, which was that this head had been rebuilt recently. The whole engine um, was not very old. It had been rebuilt um, or was a newer engine. Um, so uh, I, I've really gone way beyond what was needed. All I really needed to do, this thing ran fine. I mean, I drove it into the garage. The only thing it really needed was exhaust on it when I bought it. Um, I just wanted to take it apart to clean up all the oil leaks. Um, so really I've gone way beyond what needed to be done. Um, but it is going to be, um, you know, basically a complete rebuild engine. I'm, I'm not tearing into the case. People have asked if I'm going to check the bearings and things, and the answer is no. And the reason for that is, one, this isn't the stock engine. It doesn't have the numbers here. It has uh, numbers here. So this must have been some kind of replacement engine. Um, so at the very least, it's been replaced with, like, a newer engine. Um, but uh, it could have also be that it's been rebuilt. Um, and now with the new um, cylinders and pistons I got, it's going to be even a little bit larger um, CC engine than it was before, just slightly. Um, so basically, I'm improving it. I'm hopefully going to fix most of or all of the oil leaks in the process, and I'm cleaning it up. Um, but I'm not going to split the case. I'm not going to. I've already done way more than I, I, I needed to. Um, but I have everything I need now. I have the pistons, I have the cylinders, the heads are rebuilt, I have all the gaskets back there so the engine can be put back together. Um, you can see here, these are. The pistons and cylinders, I got new push rod tubes down there, a few other bits. Um, I also have the new drive shafts. So those are the original drive shafts. I have the new drive shafts, those came in. So everything that I need to put this car back together and get it to drive out of the shop is now here. It's just a matter of um, getting it all back together. So there'll be a few videos um, documenting that process. Um, but hopefully this thing's going to be moving very soon. I also, I didn't film it, but I replaced um, the drum, the brake drum on this side. I mentioned before um, the threads were messed up on one of these where these studs go in on the old drum. So I replaced that. So that's good to go. Um, so this thing's getting really close. Aside from the engine and transaxle, the only thing really left to do on the car is some interior work, mainly the dash. Um, so this car is almost finished. Once it's finished, um, I will be selling it. I, I've The plan all along has been to build this and then sell it. Um, maybe I won't sell it immediately, but um, you know, I don't plan on keeping this thing long term. So if you guys are interested in this car, let me know. Otherwise, I'll be posting it probably on eBay, maybe some other places once I'm ready to sell it. But anyway, this car's uh, coming along nicely. 
um, and like I said, it should be on the road very soon. Now, um, the Model T. In my latest video for the Model T, you would have seen me uh, mount the tires on the metal rims and get those rims back on the car and get it back on the ground. And I'm extremely happy with the way that it looks. I think the red wheels and the little silver bands with the new tires just looks amazing. I'm extremely happy with how this is coming out. Um, since then, I've also added a second coat of clear to a certain areas of the car. So like this area and this area, kind of the whole body minus the lower section, I put a second coat on because these rough areas still are kind of rough. Uh, I still will probably do some touch up in a few little areas on the car. Um, but you know, the nice thing is I'm brushing it on so I can really just kind of um, do it as I go. Um, I mentioned in the last video about the white pinstripe that I put on there. I also, since then, I've got these new um, door handles and I've already test fit them and, and oiled everything, the mechanisms, so everything works well now. Um, I just took these off so I could put that second coat of clear, but these are going to look really nice. Um, it was missing two of the handles. So I had to replace at least two, so I ended up just getting all four, so they're all nice and, and shiny and new. Um, but so that's looking good. Uh, I have... Oh, so the I mentioned in my last update video, termites. So it definitely uh, was termites, the issue that I was having. Those little droppings down here and on the other side, I, I looked it up online, and that's definitely um, a sign of termites. So I looked at tinting it and putting a, a bug bomb in there. But uh, I looked online, it turns out those bug bombs are not very effective for termites. Um, there are other sprays that you want to use. So I got, you can see here, I haven't shown this before, but I've been developing a small collection of old um, Ford tools because I think it's really cool. But um, so this is what I've been using. I bought this, um, I sprayed it in all the areas where I was seeing the droppings from the termites and also I sprayed it all along the roof where it's very rotted. And then in that passenger door, um, I sprayed all inside the door because that panel's off. So uh, anyway, the, the droppings have stopped. Since I sprayed that immediately, I haven't, it, it stopped. I haven't seen any um, droplets or any signs of live termites since then. Um, and as I take the car apart further, like as I pull these door panels off when I'm doing the interior, um, I will spray that um, killer inside of every part of the car as I can get to it. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's going to take care of the termite issue, hopefully. And we'll see, but hopefully it's not so bad that I'm going to have to do a, a ton of woodwork inside the car. Because I really don't want really to go that far with it. Um, if there's any issue with, you know, this thing being solid like if there are loose panels then of course I'm going to address that but I don't really want to do the whole wood of the car again I think that's just too much um but yeah so that's the Model T uh, making really good progress on that like I've said before the goal was to get this thing rolling first that way I can move it around and I have options of either having it here or not having it here um and then I'm going to pull the engine but I've discovered there's a bit of a problem with that plan which is if you pull the engine, you can't really roll the car around without the engine in it. And the reason is, um, you can see down here, these, these members of the front suspension attach to the engine. That's, that's the oil pan of the engine. So basically the front end, it's connected right there, and then it's connected right there in the center under the engine. And you, you can undo those two points and you can pull that whole thing out, you know, undo the steering rod. And you can pull the whole front section out. Um, but so without the engine in it, that thing is going to be loose, and I don't think you could really roll this car around. I think you could very easily damage something if you tried to do that. So, my plan of pulling the engine, but still being able to move the car in and out, is not really going to work, I don't think. Um, so, most likely once I pull the engine, the car will be sitting in that spot for however long it takes me to go through the engine and get it back in. So, that means, um... I'm not going to pull the engine right away because I need to be a little bit better about my planning of how I'm going to use this space uh, when that engine comes out. Or I have to make some kind of bracket so that when I pull the engine out, I can weld in some kind of or weld up some kind of bracket that could be bolted in and then the car could be moved um, with the engine out. 
anyway that's um that's the model t and the reason that's important is because you can see here um, i've got the body for the land cruiser back in this general area um, so the next thing on the body is that i've got to strip it more you can see this is kind of where we left off which is where i put in these two replacement panels um, this whole section is still in really bad shape um, like i said before i'm going to try to possibly beat this out I don't, I don't expect that to work actually. And so I'll most likely end up just buying the section I need to replace this. Um, but basically uh, what I'm gonna do next on the body is out here, I'm going to strip it all down to bare metal. And I got a new tool, so I'll kind of show you how I'm gonna do that uh, in some future videos. But I'm gonna strip everything down in here and then probably put the body into the garage where the beetle is now. Uh, and then I can work on the body panels, welding in the new panels and things like that inside is most likely what I'm going to do. And if that works, then I could have this space available for the Model T and then I could pull that engine. If that doesn't work, if it's going to be too messy in there for whatever reason, I don't want to do it that way, then the body has to be out here, meaning the Model T will take a break for a little while um, until it can come back here and then the engine can be pulled out and I can go through it mechanically. Um, like I mentioned before, I do have almost everything I need for the interior. The only thing I'm waiting for now is some of the foam for the seats, the padding and stuff for the seats. But the seats will be the last thing that I do, most likely anyways, on the interior. Um, I'll start, of course, with the roof because I have to have the headliner in. So first I have to finish the wood, repair everything up here and, and build all new pieces. Um, and then I can put in the headliner, the roof, and then the vinyl on the roof, and then I can... Um, start working my way down inside the car. So at the same time that I do the headliner, I have to do the top section of the car and then I'll do the door panels and everything like that. And I've ordered a carpet kit for it. Um, so I'm still waiting on that. Um, but yeah, so that's the Land Cruiser body. Um, that's the Model T. The next video for the Land Cruiser is still most likely going to be the transmission um, and the, the transfer case going back onto the frame. Um, so that'll be before I get to the body, but I need to start stripping this. So I probably won't film me stripping everything off of it because there's not much interest in that. But um, I need to get that stripped down before I can move on to it. So uh, that's the Model T. That's the Land Cruiser. Um, that's the Beetle. So I think that's it for this week. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Okay, bye.